Hi, my name is Albert Swendall. I've been playing steel guitar since I was 12 for quite a few years, and I want to do a video. Now that I got time to actually do a video, I want to do a video on steel guitar tone. A lot of my students I've been teaching quite a few years have asked me about tone. And that is one of the things that I've been noted for at many of these steel guitar shows I play is my tone. I have sought for years and years to get the best tone possible. Tone is a big issue because when you're playing, when you have a good tone, you play better. You sound better, you play better, you just feel better about your steel guitar playing. So let's delve into the issue of tone. It's going to be a rather lengthy video and detailed, so I would probably prefer you take notes, grab a notepad, pause the video, grab a notebook like I have, and we're going to talk about steel guitar tone. Um, the first thing we need to recognize about steel guitar tone is there are two types of personal preference, and everything about tone stems from this viewpoint. In the steel guitar world, there are generally speaking two camps in tone and it depends upon which camp you personally fall into to determine what kind of tone you're gravitating towards and those two types of camps are what I like to call the showbud warm rich deep fat tone versus the Emmons push-pull tone that kind of a thin hollow bot or thin uh, brittle sharp tone uh, those two tones are kind of opposite ends of the spectrum, but they're personal preference. I personally prefer, when I play, what gets me into that zone is the Emmons push-pull tone. There are other steel guitar players who don't like that tone, and they gravitate toward the warm, rich, full-body showbud tone. So you need to ask yourself, which do you kind of tone do you gravitate towards? And that's going to determine a lot upon, upon what equipment you buy, how you approach your instrument, and what makes you personally happy. Um, because once you decide what camp you're in, then you can steer that direction toward that tone or that direction toward that tone. It also makes a big difference in what kind of guitar you buy, because some of the manufacturers of steel guitars gravitate toward the push-pull tone, and others gravitate toward the showbud tone. So again, you need to ask yourself, what camp do you fall into as far as personal preference from that point? So most of my tone, well, all of my tone, and that I gravitate towards, is going to be toward an Emmons push-pull tone, such as the old Conway Twitty, the high, whiny cry of John Huey, that, that Buddy Emmons type sound, that Emmons push-pull tone versus the uh, showbud tone, which would be the Lloyd Green, the warm, rich, full body tone that, that camps. So that being determined, here we go. Um, there are three types of things that determine your tone. And I'm borrowing this from a bunch of videos that I've watched, so I give credit to whoever else has taught this. I've learned it. And I just, I don't remember who gave it to me or when gave it to me, but this is, I give credit to whoever gets credit for this. This is the stuff that I've learned. None of this is original, but it's what I've accumulated over my, oh, 50 years of playing steel guitar. 49. <laughs> Who's counting? All right. Number one, tone depends upon where you play, which would be our first discussion. Then our second discussion will be upon what you play, equipment and that type of stuff. And finally, the third discussion will be on how you play, uh, your technique. So going with number one, here's point number one on where you play. Uh, where you play determines a lot of your tone. And... Um, the reason I say that is because if you're playing in an indoor environment, you have a certain type of tone. You go to an outdoor environment on a flatbed truck, you have a whole different type of tone. And there are many things that can affect your tone as far as environment. Um, number one, you have to adjust your tone on your amp to the environment of the room you're playing. 
So um, example, if I get into a certain room that has hardwood floors and like a studio, I'll have to adjust my tone for that kind of room to what I'm used to hearing. If I'm outdoors and it's an outdoor venue, and then I have to adjust my tone. So when you normally adjust your tone, I tend never to adjust the mid range, but only the treble end of the tone. Uh, I tend not to adjust the bass setting as much because bass can, uh, if you need a little more bottom, you can adjust the bass to give yourself a little more bottom depending upon your environment. If you need a little less, you can back off on the bass. And if you need a little more, you can treble, you can adjust the treble or higher lows a little bit. I will talk about that in a second, about the actual settings of your tone of your amp in the second talk. But just know that whenever you're changing room environments, you have to change your settings a little bit to get the tone that you like. The other thing is humidity and air pressure. Those determine your tone a lot because as the speaker waves come toward you, it affects the humidity, affects it, the air pressure, all this are affecting. So you could, uh, example, how many times have I got into a church setting on a Saturday night to rehearse? Set up, have perfect tone. Oh, it's just perfect. Come in Sunday morning and it sounds horrible. Um, because a cold front may have moved in or a warm front may have moved in during the night, changes the air pressure, changes the humidity, the barometric pressure, and it sounds completely different, so I have to adjust. So that's just knowledge. And the more knowledge you have, you're aware of that, you can go, what happened? Well, you kind of know what it is. It's the it's same room, same settings, but it just changed. Outdoors, so that's number one. Number two, whenever possible, look around the room. If you're in a room that has a lot of fans up in the air, um, I tend to like to ask them if they can turn them off. Uh, oscillating fans, if you're playing a church, I've been to many churches where you go in and they got like 10 fans up in the air. When I'm trying to tune, especially before we, we set up, I try to ask them to turn them off because that affects your tone big time. Fans circulating, little fans here, little fans there, that really affects your tone. If possible, I try to ask them to turn the fans off because that does affect your tone big time. We talked about the humidity. Um, also, we talked about the room volume. If you're playing in a real quiet room or you're playing in a noisy room, that can affect people coming in, can affect how many times you've set up your equipment at a small venue, a coffee shop. If you walk in, set up, there's nobody in the room. Then you get there and they're packed out and all of a sudden it sounds different. The people and the bodies affect tone. So that's something else you have to account for. So <laughs> you can set up on one night and you have the perfect tone and you're practicing and then come back there in the morning or the next evening and all of a sudden your tone has changed. You go, what happened? Well, there's different people, there's humidity, all of these things. Um, the other thing is when you get into a room that's real small and the re reverberation walls bounce back at you so your sound goes and comes back, you may have to cut your delay back, you may have to cut your reverb back to adjust accordingly. So that's number two, one. Where you play determines a lot of your tone and just know that nobody's exempt from these rules. Every professional player deals with this on your room and where you play. So having the knowledge of saying, okay, something has changed, I just have to adjust my tone of amp because that's what you can control rather easily and quickly. Stay away from adjusting the mid-range, but go gravitate toward the treble and maybe a little bit up or down or the bass end a little bit up or down. There's a reason for that, I'll tell you. That's number one, where you play, knowledge. Number two is what you play. Now, what you play is your equipment. And what you play determines a lot of your tone, not all of it, um, but a large part of it. However, that being said, the bigger factor is, number three, is um, how you play. And this is why a I heard a video by Terry Crisp playing a um, student model Carter at Bobby Seymour shop. Sounded killer on a student model steel guitar. Then there are some players who've got a $10,000 steel guitar and they don't sound good. Well, that's because of a lot of how they play. A great player who has really good tone will sound good on pretty much every instrument that they play. But that doesn't negate the fact that the better equipment you have, the better cables you have, the better picks you have, the better equipment you have, if you can afford it and it's in your budget, the better off your tone is going to be. So let's start 
piece by piece and follow the train of what to play. Number one, the make. Well, first of all, and before the make of the steel guitar, you've got to decide what kind of steel guitar you want. Do you want a single neck 10 string? Do you want a single neck 12 string? Do you want a double neck 10 string? Do you want a double neck 12 string? This happens to be a double neck 12 string that I just bought. Beautiful guitar, love it. Um, but that's just because I like to have the double neck. So ask yourself, do I want a single neck? Do I want a double neck? Do I want a wide body? Do I want a heavy guitar? Do I want a light guitar? Okay, so that's the first thing you need to decide. What kind of guitar you want? How many pedals? How many levers? Then number two, what kind of guitar do I get? There's, as you know, there's varieties of guitars out there. There's Mullins, MSAs, uh, Carters, Zom Steels. They don't make them anymore. Um, Rittenberry, all these different makes and models manufacture. Williams, of which I play. I played many different brands. I've owned many different brands. The last one I had before this was a Zum, gray guitar. So here's the scoop. Most manufacturers who manufacture a steel guitar tend to fall into a certain type of camp. Remember going back to the camps. The MS or the Showbud sound versus the Emin sound. I'm going to refer to that. Now, the people who make the steel guitars fall into a certain camp when they make their steel guitars. So that's why this Williams will sound much more like a Showbud sound than a Zum steel guitar. It will sound more like the Emmons sound. The reason is because Bruce Zum, and I've talked to him, know him, his ear, his tendency, his camp that he falls into has always been the Emmons push-pull tone. That's why he made the hybrid. Um, so that's the camp that a Zum steel will fall into if you're looking for that type of tone. If you're not looking for that type of tone, you want the Show Bud tone, then you've got Show Pro is a great one company that makes that type of guitars. Williams is a great company with that warm, full body, rich Show Bud type of tone. Um, Mullins is kind of in between. MSA gravitates more towards this, that. There again, okay, you may say, well, other players play them and they sound like a Show Bud Emmons uh, and an MSA, and some people, that's because of how they play in their equipment. But, Generally speaking, that's what you need to look out for when buying a certain brand of guitar is ask yourself, which camp do they fall into? The showbud, warm, rich, full body, beefy tone, or that bright, sharp, crisp, Conway Twitty, Emmons tone. So that determines on what type of guitar you're going to look for. Um, and then again, once you decide what type of guitar, then you got to decide what you want for that guitar. Because that does affect the tone as well. Whether you get a keyless, whether you get a full uh, keyed head, um, if you get a single neck, if you get a double neck, get a single neck with a bottom body, all of those do affect the tone to some degree. Number two is your amplifier. I played so many amps I can't even begin to count. I played every PV amp that has been available out there. I played... Um, all the expensive amps that have been out there, uh, I've had people, students who have brought them to me. I've tried them, the Telonix amps. Uh, right now, I'm playing a Steel Air Combo amp that, for me, I feel is the best amp out there. Obviously, it's a little bit on the expensive side, um, but for me, it's worth it. Um, there's a little history of how I came up with this, actually. Um, so that's what I use, the Steel Air Combo, a 15-inch speaker. Um, Talant Quilter has come out with a couple new amps with the 12-inch um, speaker. I have not tried them yet, but I hear they're excellent. Most of my steel guitar career, I've used PV amplifiers, um, such as the one back here, the Nash Special 112 that I have back here. And I've used the 112s. I've used the uh, 400s, the, oh, the big beefy one, the 500 had one of those. Uh, other amps I've had are Labs, uh, They way back when, every, like I say, so... Uh, the better possible steel guitar amps you can get are probably going to be the PVs within the budget. And if you can't afford it, then get a Tlonix or a Quilter or a couple other different amps. The Web is a great amp. I don't even know if they make them anymore. I don't think they do. Obviously, weight has a lot of decision on the tone. The Quilter, I decided on it because of the weight. It is um, the best sound to the Fender. I used to have the old Fender... Um, Twin Reverb with a 15-inch uh, JBL K130 speaker on it. That was the ultimate tone I liked, but that thing was a moose, heavy. I'd have two handles on the side and roadies to take it. Remember the days of roadies. Funny. Um, 
But there again, whatever you can afford within your budget, uh, do some amp shopping. Um, the amps, as far as which sound they generally speak, doesn't really matter that much at all. That depends upon the amp settings of the amp. So uh, if you're looking to gravitate toward the Showbud tone or the Emmons tone, it doesn't kind of matter which amp you use, as long as it's a steel guitar amp and it barely, as mu much money as you can afford to get the best you can. Number three. Uh, the pedals, or your volume pedal, I should say. The volume pedals make a big difference in your tone as well. Here again, it's a budget issue and what you're used to. I am using, actually, an old, you can't see it, but I'm using an old MSA pot pedal with the gears on it, and I just changed the pot. Uh, the reason why I prefer that at this point over the Tonix or the um, Goodrich pedals or the other Hilton pedals is because I don't like to plug things in. And I like the old time sound of the pot pedal. I have to change the pot every once and, and clean it up, but to me it's worth it. And it's just personal preference for what I like. Um, if you can afford the money and you want to really invest in it, get in a Tonics pedal, volume pedal, or a Hilton volume pedal or electronic, I do believe is a better uh, quality of tone and they don't go bad on you. So there again, volume pedal does affect your tone. So then on cables. Uh, I have chosen, I've used the George L, or no, excuse me, um, what are these again? <laughs> these are, um, yeah, the George L cables, I believe, the real thin cables. Um, here again, cables can make a big difference on your tone. Uh, I think, in my opinion, this is my opinion, if you're looking for that sharp, if you're gravitating toward the Emmons push-pull tone, I think the George L cables are a little better. They tend to give you not quite as much full fat tones, but they give you a little more toward the high crisp tones that I like. Um, but if you're looking more toward the showbud tones, I think regular guitar cables. Um, recently I bought um, these from, uh, what's his name? Uh, Herb Niehaus. And I like those if you want to get a warm, rich tone. And these are uh, bullet cable ends. Very nice cables, quality made but they do have a different tone to them. So if I'm looking to record like an old warm rich uh, steel guitar tone with the showbud sound, I will use these cables. Um, there again, cables do make a difference, but get high quality cables. That's the one thing you don't want to get is cheap cables. The second thing about guitar cables is make sure you use the shortest length possible. You can. I use a three foot from here to here and then a six foot from here to my amp. Uh, the longer the cable, the less tone you're going to have because the longer it has to travel. And most steel, all steel guitar cables are high impedance, which means the longer the cable are, the more you're going to lose tone. So try to keep your cables to the shortest you can and quality cables. You don't want to skimp on those. Number five, bars. Bars make a big difference in tone. And I have recently discovered uh, a couple of great things. One is I bought... Um, two bars from the Williams Steel Guitar Company, and I actually believe that these bars are superior in tone to the BHS. I've used BHS for a long time. Great bars, but I've talked to Bill Rudolph and the Williams Guitar Company. He sold me on these bars. I have two different bars, and they're two different tones, and in another video I may describe you, I'll actually play the difference. I'm not hooked up to play right now. But there is a huge difference between, this is a 12-string, 15, 16th bar. Now, when I use that, that gives me a really solid punch. It's bright, a crispness that stands out there that is just presence. Uh, and it's a 12 string bar because I play a 12 string and it covers all the strings so I can get a lot more voicings on. However, whenever I'm doing a song that needs to have like a push pull tone, if I'm doing an old standard country tone flavor, I will go to the 10 string bar. There is a difference, as you, I don't know if you can see the difference in the height but also the thickness is a 7 8 standard size 10 string bar. When I play with that, there's a big difference. There is a big difference in the bar. So if I'm doing an Emmons push pull Conway Twitty song, like Lend on My Mind or something like that, I will always go to this bar that gives me that more of that Emmons push pull tone versus when I'm doing my full bodied rich uh, tones, especially like the C6 or how we gravitate toward that one. So bars make a big difference in your tone. Picks. Picks make a big difference in your tone as well. Uh, almost all steel guitar players for thumb picks use the blue Herkimo pick. That's what you want to use if that's what you're comfortable with. Here again, 
everything is personal preference depending upon what you're looking for in tone, what you want in tone. But the Blue Hurricane will pick is probably what most steel guitar players get, recommended to all I've used. The personal picks, there's all kinds of picks. Right now I'm using an NP2. Uh, they're coded by Doug Rolfe, and um, I use them for that. Uh, you can experiment with tones, GF tones. There's all kinds of different picks for tone. Whatever you prefer, that, that is personal preference, but they do make a difference if you use good finger picks. Picks are another one. Now, strings. Steel guitar strings are a big difference. If you're playing on old strings, it's going to sound great when you play on new strings. As much as your budget can afford, go into new strings as much as you can. If you're playing out a lot, you definitely, well, in today's world right now, nobody's playing out, but that's a different story. But if you're playing, if you're practicing every day, you should be changing your strings probably at least once every two months, maybe once a month. Uh, you'll notice a big tone difference, especially if you go out to play, if this thing gets over and you go out to play, old strings don't sound good. New strings sound great. So, uh, by the way, just to give you a note, I ordered a set of strings for my E9th from Stringjoy, and I'm supposed to be getting them tomorrow or the next day. And uh, I put them on my electric and my acoustic, and what a difference. I could not believe the difference strings make. Stringjoy out of Nashville makes their own strings. They're not just different packaging. They're, they make them there. Uh, they're a little more expensive by the order. So when I put them on my E9th and I'm going to test them the next couple of days, I will definitely put out a video, uh, yes or no. But on the electric guitar and the acoustic guitar, what a difference. Stringjoy.com, awesome strings. I'm excited, so excited to try them on my E9 too. And I'll let you know when I get them put on. Pickups make a big, big difference as well. These are the new Talonix X12 pickups. Uh, which can be adjusted. I have not gotten them adjusted yet. I just got this guitar a couple weeks ago, and so I'm just getting used to the guitar and the pickups. So far, I like them, but I've used the Talonix one with the bar magnets. I forget what they're called with the straight bars. I'm going to probably maybe try those again, but there again, pickups make a big difference. Um, George L. pickups make great pickups. You just have to research and find out what you like for your choice of pickups, but they do make a big difference. Also, steel guitar attachments. Now, what I mean by attachments are things that are steel guitar volume pedal buffers. The electronic pedals do not need them as much, but um, uh, the passive pedals, like I have, do. This makes a big difference. The little Izzy is a buffer. You just plug it into your guitar here, and then you plug that into your volume pedal, and they, they do make a big difference in the, the clarity and the tone and also the sound of your instrument. I use mine probably about half the times when I want that really clear, punchy sound. I would use this if I'm looking for a really a full, rich body with not a lot of punch, I will take it off and not use it. But this I use all the time. So that makes a big difference. Um, I don't even know if you can find these little Izzy's anymore. I don't think they're available, but something like that if you're using a passive volume pedal, but most players are using the electric pedals, so they already have that built in, so you don't need those attachments. The other thing you need to be aware of is if you're running uh, other uh, pedals, like a wah-wah pedal or a distortion pedal or a delay pedal or any kind of pedals that you add in the path, they definitely affect your tone unless they are called true bypass. If you want to keep your steel guitar tone best you can, go with pedals that say true bypass on the pedals itself. If they don't say true bypass, then what they do is they color your tone when you plug in a pedal and you go out of it, and even though you have it off and, and it's supposed to be off, it still affects the tone. So try to find any pedals that you use, any kind of uh, outboard stuff, reverbs, delays, whatever, make sure they're true bypass. Otherwise it will affect your tone. Uh, and you, there again, it's personal preference. If you like the tone, the way the cha pedals change it, great. But to keep that tone the purest, you want to find true bypass pedals. The last thing that I want to talk about there, but I'm not even going to go into this, is tuning your guitar. Obviously, if your steel guitar is out of tune, it's going to sound horrible. If it's in tune, it's going to sound great, but that's a whole separate video. I will do another video probably tomorrow or the next day on tuning, because that is something I learned a long time ago from the master of tuning, Al Petty, and he taught me, I lived with him for a year in uh, California for a year and he taught me this art and science of tuning and it's not what you know or it's not what you hear it's what you know you're tuning 
So I'll go into that promise um, in another video, but that's for a different time. But it does affect your playing, your tuning, obviously. Number three, I know this is long, but believe me, this is a lot of questions from steel students and they want to know. Number three that affects your tone is how you play. Now, how you play affects your tone. And the best way I can tell you this is example. Um, you're, you're picking, okay? So number one, you're picking placement. Where you place your picks affects your tone. If you're looking for a warm, rich, full body show bud tone, you want to be playing toward the middle of the guitar or toward this end of the guitar here, like here. If you're looking for an Emmons push-pull, brighter tone, you want to play more toward the pickup because that, the, the closer you play to the pickup, the more brighter tone you're going to get. The further the way you play from the pickup, the more full, rich body tone you're going to get. So if you're really looking for that old Tom Brumley, that um, Buck Owens type West Coast sound, you, I sometimes will actually almost play right on the, um, right on with almost like right over the pickups. <laughs> Ralph Mooney, that type of tone, I will almost play right here. And then for normal playing, I play right in between the fretboard and the pickup here. For normal playing, when I want a really full, rich sound, I go into here. So your pickups or your picks, where you play on the pickup or on the guitar, affects your tone. Like I said, now the bar does affect your tone as well, which bar you use, but also your vibrato affects your tone and your playing. If you're looking for a Lloyd Green sound, you're gonna use almost zero bar vibrato. Lloyd Green did not use hardly any vibrato, but he did use it, but not as much. Zero. John Huey, when he played with Conway Twitty, used bar vibrato to the max. So your bar vibrato affects your tone. That type of stuff. Um, so your vibrato affects your tone. Also, your attacking the strings affects your tone. If you attack the strings hard versus you, if you attack them soft, that affects your tone as well. And then also your volume pedal affects your tone in the sustain. As your sustain begins down, you use your volume pedal to give you more volume. It increases your sustain, so that increases your sound and how you play. Those are three things that help you how you play. Then the last thing is how you hear. This is so important. Um, everybody has problems with their ears to some degree. I have a heavy wax buildup in my ears, so I have to make sure that I clean my ears out probably once, at least once a week to get the wax buildup. That definitely affects your tone and how you hear. If you have a lot of wax buildup in your ears, um, it just you don't hear as good. So I found that I use a professional or a store-bought thing where I do the flunge flush and then I flush my ears out probably once a week, every other week with the earwax because that does affect how I hear. The other thing is hearing aids. Um, if you use hearing aids, that's also going to affect how you hear, but you need to be able to hear well. So, and that's the last point. I hope this has been educational for you and uh, I'm going to make some more videos. I'll let you know how the strings on the String Joy turn out and uh, you have a great day. And God bless you. Thank you.